Today, our focus lies on the theme of the impact of globalization on less developed countries, special reference to Asia. Our schedule for today is as follows. We have a 45 minute lecture plan followed by a brief five minute break. After the break, we will resume with another 30 minutes of the lecture. And finally, we will engage in a question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce our distinguished guest lecturer, Professor M.G. Kularatna. Professor M.G. Kularatna is a senior lecturer at the Department of Economics at the Faculty of Social Sciences of the University of Kelania. His impressive academic credentials include a PhD in Environmental Economics from Queensland University of Technology in Australia, an MSc in Socioeconomic Information for Natural Resources Management from the International Institute for Aerospace Survey and Earth Sciences in the Netherlands, and a BA with Honours in Economics from the University of Peradeniya. Professor Kularatna's research work is mainly focused on efficiency, productivity analysis of the use of natural resources, development issues, education, and solid waste management. In addition to being an academic at the University of Kalania, he also works as a research supervisor, university representative, economist, social development expert and social impact assessment consultant in many important national and international projects. Sir, we are profoundly honored to have you with us here and we warmly welcome you to deliver this lecture on the impact of globalization on less developed countries, special reference to Asia. Thank you. Good evening, uh, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, Sumla is a uh, nicely introduced me to be everybody, and it's a bit heavy training uh, in the training evening you know, that we are going to meet for some time to discuss the theme what she was explaining. Mm. I'm sure that everybody is happy with uh, this evening and to listen some time, and it would be good that. Uh, you can ask some question even when I am explaining this topic. I don't mind that that is okay because you know that it's, it's supposed to be the good way to do. And can you see the screen in this way or do you want me to enlarge a little bit more? Yes, we can see it. Uh, if possible, please, yes, enlarge it a little bit more. Yeah, because this uh, technology is giving some trouble time, some time to me. Um, I hope this is fine, is it? Okay, so if I enlarge it more than that, if I start in slide show, yeah, yeah. the slide is not moving. And it uh, uh -huh. and that is why I'm going to keep it like this. If you can see that it's okay. You know, otherwise Yeah, we can see it. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, I right, right. Okay, now thank you very much for the organizers for inviting me for to have this lecture this evening, and uh, I think this is maybe third time or fourth time, but anyway, that's a fantastic opportunity uh, to discuss some of the ideas among the wider audience uh, uh, on this topic once again, and uh, let's discuss about the, the impact of globalization in Asia or less developed countries. Or, or specializing, uh, very much specialized in Sri Lanka. And uh, it's a fantastic topic, which I really like. You know why? Because basically, this has to learn this time. This is the good period of time in the country to thinking about what is globalization and how it is impacting for us because we have enough experience throughout the, the, over the last couple of years, even though the economy is more liberalized after 1977, now is the good time we are harvesting the result of that, okay? 
So, however, the, the learning objectives in this discussions today to gain an understanding of the influence of globalized economic system towards Asian countries or Asian ideology or Asian way of thinking, especially influence of agriculture modernization, globalized economic system towards Sri Lankan culture. Okay. And I will discuss this uh, topic uh, under several sub areas, like I will give you a very brief introduction. Also, I'm happy to discuss something about globalization. Then let's go with the free market ideology. What is exactly this uh, globalization is based on? And then we will discuss what is Asian ideology mean? Then finally, we want to know that what is the impact of globalization on Sri Lanka or less developed country or Sri Lankan society and maybe the mode of production. Simply, mode of production mean the way we are producing. Okay. And um, once again, I'm asking, if you are not clear somewhere, it's much better to ask me because this is not the examination. You know, that's a part of the discussion. My main point, <laughs> my, my main idea oh. is you should understand what we are discussing. Okay. Uh, let's see that uh, where we are living now. We are live with free market economy. Then what is free market economy? We can say that it's the liberal economy or it can be neoliberal economy. And those who are not familiar with economic jargon, don't worry because you know that we are not going to discuss about the fundamentals of economics. But what we are discussing, things what we really want to know under this topic. I will simply explain if something gets stuck in somewhere, it is your responsibility to discuss with me. And you know that in I, I said that after 1977, we could see big onions. We say we are calling them as the Bombay onions, Bilu or otherwise. In the first time when I saw them in 1977, it was it was yellow color. What does example say? Before 1977, I haven't seen a big onions in this country because the, the importation was completely stopped. Okay. And then we got this big onion from India after 1977. What, what, what changes has happened in the economy? In 1997, 77, they introduced free market economic system to the country. Earlier, we cultivate ourselves, even the child, the school boys, school child, children, students have to work on the school ground, the, the lands. We have to cultivate something. And the this drastic changes is giving a, like heaven for us because Everything is everywhere. Hmm? That is one reason in 1978, our economic growth is very high. So what does it mean? What does it mean to us? That an economic system based on supply and demand with little or no government control are defined as a free market. And also it is open for the export import marketing system. Okay, conceptually, free market is economic system is working without the intervention of the government control. It's a theoretical system or theoretical explanation. But free market also implement under the open economic policy. That is what I was discussing. Uh, the changes have has happened in after 1977. Open market economic system is the system what we are living today. And that one is much based on the free market. But free market again, later on developed as a neoliberalism free market economy. Then the 
neoliberalism mean a policy model that encompasses encompass both politics and economic and seeks to transfer the control of economic factor from the public sector to the private sector. That is the that that is what slide says. It's simply, you know, that if we allow to economy to go with free market, that can have a big impact on either producer or consumer. And through that, when we are introducing open economic policy and the private sector is involving more and more. But sometimes it can have a big impact on either producer or a consumer. Then the government is intervened to minimize that disadvantage in the society for a country. And that one comes as a neoliberalism. Now you are practicing in this country, we are a little bit more neoliberal economy. We have a more neoliberal economic system. Why? Government is intervened very much into the, the transfer, the control of economic factors from the public sector to the private sector. Is it clear? We are living in an open economic system open market economic system that is very much based on the pre market okay pre market is basically the economic is running without or little government control but again later on we will see that in the countries in the world they are practicing neoliberalism which is much influenced by the government but you know there are some countries like japan and usa they are not that much involved, the government, that government is not that much involved in the economic activities. They are allowing to go the pre-market mechanism. So, however, under this context, now we are facing with the globalization. There are many words on that. But anyway, what does it globalization mean? Simply it says it is open for everything for everybody. That means the spread of the flow of financial product, goods, technology, information, and jobs across the national boundaries and cultures. I mean, the free flow of either technology or a financial access for a goods or technology or information and employment are crossing in any boundaries in the world. There is no barriers. So that's another example which I practiced in my childhood. And I have seen that some of the women in the villages in our country, they went to Middle East. The labor was mobilized after, after open economic policy introduced in 1997. And earlier it was a close economy. We haven't had a big contact with the international market. And the globalization is giving us working with the, the other countries' technology as well as their culture as well. Okay. And that is where, that is what we do, that is where we are living. Now you can see many people are living in the country, and the government is not said no. And the doctors are leaving, and the old, very many specialists in the different subjects, they are living in the country, saying that they can't live in this country. And nobody is restricted. That means under the globalization, yeah, if you like, you can go. If you want to invest, you can invest in any country. If you want to work with work in, in some other country, then you can go. If you want to get the technology, you can get it. Okay, you can invite the people to invest their money in our country if they like. And it's like very free. Right? It seems like fantastic. We are happy, aren't we? Sometime, yes, we'll discuss those things in the next couple of minutes. And now, what is the idea behind it? What is the idea behind it? Then the free market ideology, 
the methods or the way it is organized are coming under free market ideology. So free market ideology and the globalization is connected. If I repeat again, the globalization at the integration of national economies into one huge international economy via foreign direct investment, migration, trade, capital flow, and trade, et cetera, et cetera. Then somebody can ask me, if the labor is a part of the globalization process, what has happened when Gajaba went to India and took some 12,000 people into this country by force? And later on, in 19, after 1948, when we are starting our states, no, before 1948, the Indian labor came to Sri Lanka and the England wealth, they invest in our states. Yes, of course, they also a part of the globalization, but it was not generate aggravated impact like what we are getting today. Okay, therefore, it seems that globalization is spawns capitalism. Okay, what does capitalism mean then? And the capitalism is economic distribution and production are owned by private entities, accumulate profit. It seems like free market economy in the, in the open economy, the private sector is accumulated profit and some part of the society are they are getting rich while others are getting poor and poor. If you look at the many other countries in Asia, now you can see that we are in a struggling with the war. And there is a huge war between Ukraine and Russia. And after one week before, since last week perhaps, there is another serious war is going on and Israel and Gaza area. Now it's almost these countries are not very developed. It seems like many Asian countries are less developed. If you get the Afghanistan and there are natural disasters and we got tsunami. And with all the difficulties, the economy is going on, but it is seems like very much capitalistic economic model the private sector and the private ownership is more prominent than the government ownership. Now you can see in Sri Lankan streets, many people are shouting, don't go more for state enterprises to privatization. Because this is the principle of capitalism. And it seems like capitalism is encouraged by the globalization because we are living in a globalized market. And the globalized market is promoting the capitalism or private sector entrepreneurship. And it's give more and more profit flow into the small group of society in the world. And you can see that in the global context, this is happening. And based on that, we can divide the world as a developed and less developed countries. And within that framework, you are talking about economic development. Economic development. You know that the, the politician and the many people, when they are talking about the economic development, they talk about development, but they don't talk about economic growth. First of all, you have to achieve economic growth to go to economic development. But the term is always using, if you want to, increase the petty production, we are calling it as a development. No, it is a force. It is a part of the economic growth, of the sectoral economic growth, let's say like that. And anyway, economic development under free market economy, the, the ideology or market system promoting individualism. And you know that the capitalistic market economy is always promoting individualism. Why? Theoretically, whatever the things you are tasting, you try your best to taste yourself. And we are calling it as a utility. Once you are consuming, producing, looking at the film or anything, 
wearing a clothes. You try to maximize your, your own satisfaction. That is what you are calling as a utility, okay? And also each and everybody try to maximize their profit. Okay? And throughout that practice, we are trying to maximization and lead into a material development. We are consuming as much as we can and they are becoming happy people. Okay, that is what exactly happened. And later discussion of this session, you will understand the opposite side, what we had in Asia. Okay, and the capitalistic market economic model is always promoting individualism. As the father of modern economics, Adam Smith is saying, we are greediness people. Greedy means it's not the matter of eat the plate of rice. It is a matter of to taking everything towards to you to maximize your own satisfaction. Okay? And you don't want to think someone else. If you want to, if you can get as much as you can, and that is your purpose under this economic model. Okay? You can see that in any private sector workers. They are not working to maximize in social welfare rather than collecting more and more profit day by day. The good example is a private bus. The driver or conductor is not worried about whether you are, how you are going inside the bus. They want to get more and more people just to earn more and more money. That's it. But you will see that this, the CTB Sometimes the conductor and driver is keep silence. They are not shouting sometimes. But nowadays we can see that they also shouting in the bus hall. And they are calling the names of where they are going. Why? Because there is a huge competition between private sector and CTB or central transport system. And that is competition also part of the capitalism model. Because they want to make competition to get more and more there towards their own. And even the election system, you can see that each and every candidate, they do whatever they can to get more and more votes. Some people might distribute some 10 kilos of rice. Bad luck, our people are getting them and voting never know that, whether it is intelligent way or not to do that, okay? So, however, these are things you can see mixing with the human culture through this open economic pre-market mechanism. It's a very serious philosophy because market economic model is touching your psychological desires. What is psychological desires mean? Each and everybody is willing to happy as much as they can, utilizing material equipments, the material things. You are not happy to give up something. If you have happened to give up something, you are very unhappy. You are crying when people are died, when people are crying because you can't give up. If something lost, you are crying because you can't give up them. Why? Because you are desired. You are you like them. You are greedy for them. And this conceptual background is developing in a human psychology throughout the pre-market ideology. So at the end of the day. This is what happened with the globalized free market. And you can see that in this part, in the, the north part of the, the world, and this is the south. And you will see that how they are working to get collect more and more. Because conceptually, based on a globalized free market ideology, this economic activity is promoted individualistic thinking system to maximize 
individual benefits. Up to now, what I have discussed is what is the behavior of free market economy, globalization system, neoliberalism, market economy, kind of a economic jargon or concept around us where we are living today. Clear? Now we are moving to see what is Asia, what is very much of developing or less developed countries. Why we are calling them as less developed countries? Because we can't say them as a developing country because even the developed nations are still developing. Okay? Even the developed nations are also still developing. Therefore, we can say that countries are developing everywhere in the world, but some of them are more developed and some of them are less developed. It makes sense rather than saying developing and developed nation. You know that in even America, you can see that sometimes people are killed. Sometimes they are shooting to each other. If they are developed economically and psychologically and socially, I don't think people want to kill anybody. Now you can see that how many people died today due to the wars in all over the world. But have you ever heard about there is a huge war in the USA or Germ the, 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 the western part of the world, including England, Germany, France, Japan in that side, thanks to it comes on the Asian side. And they developed and they don't try to kill each other. Then who are trying to do this? Most less developed countries and African and Asian countries are very prominent for this sort of work. But it's a beauty of that. We are using heavy weapons. We did that one over the last 30 years war. But my question is, are we producing them? No. Those countries who are producing weapons, do they use it? No, they don't. We don't produce, but we used. They produce, but they don't use. And even that point is quite enough to understand what is happening in the market, in the world, globalized free market system. And that is why, in one point, the Karl Marx is saying, the war is crisis of overproduction. The war is crisis of overproduction. Suppose that if you produce something more than you want, what will happen? You can't utilize them. Then you have to sell them. Then once again, think that nobody is buying this one. But you want to finish this stock. What do you want to do? You have to make some program to be used there. That is what Karl Marx said. When you are reaching to the overproduction, it naturally creates a crisis. So my, finally, my question is, my question is, globalization, free market economy, ideology, and our satisfaction. There is a neoliberalism, globalization, and free market, and open economic, and everything is there. My question is, how do you feel today? Are you happy? Or are you unhappy? Or do you have anything to say? Maybe no. Huh? What do you think? Are you happy or unhappy with the system what we are practicing today? Does anybody want to answer for the question? What I a simple uh, question. Are you happy with the way we are going now? Hmm? Are you happy with the, the economic model we are living? Anybody want to answer me or yes or no? Or can't say anything? Hmm? No? 
Does anybody have a question up to this point? Okay. And uh, yeah, agenda is saying that there are time to ask a question, but in the same time, you can ask some question. If something is missing, then you can't go for. Okay. Now let's try our best to understand on the contrary, what is the Asian ideology? Give me a second because train is fast in my home. Noise. Hmm? Yeah. Now let's try to discuss about, we know what is free market ideology or the way the market is working now. But we have to look at a behind. Now you know that the Japan is one of the, the developed country in the world. In the day, if you visit Japan, you will see that they are developing while they are protecting their culture. Okay. They don't misuse any piece of land. Even in the urban areas, they try their best to cultivate as much as they can. But it's still, they are practicing very well. They are culture as well. Then what does culture mean? Hmm? If I ask what is culture, people might say that, you know, that we have this and that. And some of the traditions or some of the tools you might explain as a culture. Culture is a part of the exercise you should do. It is not lasting every, the forever. The activities you have to continue to protecting culture and continuation of the culture. The simple words in the glossary, you can see that it's called like aswadumized. It is not there, but the meaning is like that. You have to prepare. You have to make it ready. Then only we can move on with the practice, which is support for our day-to-day -day life. And you know, when we are talking about the free market ideology, they are try their best to produce the things. Why? Because they like to earn profit. What does production mean? The production is transformation of natural resources into good goods, okay? Or maybe the services. To produce good, then you have to use the natural resources. That the natural resources can be displayed. Why? Depleting resources. Some of them are regenerating, but some of them are not regenerating. And the producer are producing to maximize profit, consumer uh, consume to maximize its utility. At the end of the day, we are in a problem with we are losing our natural resource base. So natural resource base also, the protecting natural resource base also a part of the culture, right? If you are missing these cultural practices, sometimes even though we are developed, but still we can be poor in the other sense. And therefore the ASEAN ideology try their best to protect the environment and go through the development. Now, you know that the, the, the global temperature is increasing by 1.5 centigrade over the last year or last couple of years. Why? Because we are heavily using natural resources in order to produce more and more and polluting the environment. And that is what capitalist market model is leading to. And we will get the results in very future, even today. You can see that the part of the country is flooding while other part is completely drying. And if you get that example for the world, it's still the same. And therefore, let me see, let me, let me, let me discuss what is Asian ideology mean. Then Asian ideology of economic and social activities organized through 
the holistic system, holistic thinking. What is holistic mean? They were tried their best to protect human and environment, including all fauna and flora, and the soil, the birds, the mountain, rivers, and everything. Now, earlier, we said that market system is supporting us to earn profit. It doesn't matter what it is, actually. Now you can see that many of you might get for the private tuitions. But the private tuition is a big enterprises in this country. And even many Sri Lankans who are living in another country, still they are looking for private tutors to take them to their home. Why? They are practicing this one. They have their in mind, even though they are developed, living in a well developed countries, still they're looking for a private tuition because it is becoming as an action the habitual action of the people who are living in that particular our countries. And you know that the holistic thinking means they always try to maximize social welfare rather than the individualistic maximization. Then the social welfare mean the society, including the environment, they want to protect them and they want to develop through the environment and with the whole society. And therefore, this discussion is very much leading to discuss about holistic versus linear or individualistic thinking. Okay, That means simply how Asia was thinking earlier, now how we have been transformed. Therefore, this lecture is yeah, about holistic thinking versus linear thinking or system thinking ideology versus pre-market ideology. And the thick picture is giving uh, one of the catch catchment of reservoirs in Sri Lanka. You know, we have thousands of thousands of small reservoirs in this country, and that is one of the outstanding examples to tell you and how Sri Lankan were think as a system. Now somebody can ask me, are we go want to go in back to that? Maybe not, maybe not. But we can get some lesson from, from it. Okay, we can learn some lessons. If you get the, the Sri Lankan map, one inch map, you will see that how many reservoirs are located in this country. Do you know that? Sri Lanka is reported as the highest reservoir density in the world. We have every square 2.5 hectares of water in every square kilometer in this country. It is reported, but nobody is saying that it is not. And if you look at this catchment, and the water is collected. Actually, now India also they also have a micro catchment reservoir. That means such a small part. Micro catchment is like this, and collecting water for cultivation, having a very small catchment. But in Sri Lankan system, there is a meso catchment. Okay, and can you imagine how our peoples, our ancestors' knowledge on geometry? and their knowledge in the landscaping, and their knowledge in the rainfall, and the temperature, and how they were thinking of the environment. So outstanding example, for, therefore, the common property resources, that means people are using, a group of people are managing, that is a different topic to discuss, but anyway, and these resources are outstanding example to explain that how people would think as a whole. And if you get the, such a small reservoir, there is the sum of the other elements, compulsory, you can see each and every reservoir. And there is area of the upper catchment, there are some forest areas. And maintaining humidity, providing some grazing areas, uh, and there is a trace in, in the middle of the reservoirs. There is a tank bunk. One is here. And some settlement is somewhere there. And there is a distributary canal. I mean, this is 
I, I, it might take another two, three hours to discuss the structure, but just try to understand this type of activities we had in Sri Lanka. If you get that one to a little bit rather investigate. Now, what the system says, because this is how we organize the environment. This is how we try to maximize our social benefit. This is the way we try to protect the whole animal in the planet or our country earlier. Don't think that this type of things are in the, some other countries in many hundred years ago. Thanks to development, so-called capitalist development, we completely forget the environment. But look at how people developed. They are protecting their culture and the environment. They live happily, having a good environment and having a good society. Therefore, it seems that in the Asian ideology, maintaining the main features of the holistic system thinking. Number one, you can extract this information from the system. Number one is environmental sustainability. They protect the environment first, but luckily we destroy the environment first whenever we are going to develop, right? whatever the project we are going to implement. And the first of all, what we are doing, we are destroying the environment. Then you can see that the land sale in this country. They are, they are completely cleaning the land first of all before they are going to sell it. And they are saying, later they are saying, we develop, then we sell. What does it mean? They destroy all the trees and everything. And later on, they said that. Now, looking at this system, it's fantastic. I mean, it's really interesting to study this type of things. Even though we are having a, such a nice heritage, the bad thing is our universities, we are not just trying to study the systems to see that how we can couple with the new development uh, process. But I was discussing, you know, that the th these are the three main areas they were concerned when they were working with the systems. One thing is they want to protect the environment, okay? There are some elements here to protect the, the dam and the you know, the birds and the buffaloes and trees and the streams and paddy fields and everything. You know, the, the system itself giving a protective environment. And also, it also giving an opportunity to, to develop economic and resource sharing and sharing system of the paddy fields and the water allocation. But you get this one as example, because I told you that this is another two or three hours time discussion. We are not going to discuss that one, all of it, but it also maintaining the social sustainability. Okay. What allocation, land allocation, housing in the village for so social protection, ensuring food security, and all these things almost protect the whole environment. And this is what our head in our mind. And therefore, we reach to this sustainable development in our own. Okay, we ensure the sustainable development in this way. How? Improvement of lifestyle and well-being and preserving natural resources and ecosystem. That this was the model of our sustainability. But you will get some different sustainable development definition in very recently. Okay. And now through this one, People try their best to protect the food security. And you know that the reservoir provide many things. And forest, livestock, food, the, the aquaculture, and rice farming, and all these things are ensure the food security in the village economics. But now, how we are going to look at, at the food security? Before 1977, we had to produce ourselves then we have to earn ourselves, we have to have our own. But after 1977, the things are available in the market, then you have to have money. You have to have money. 
otherwise you can't buy. The market availability is a part of the, the free market economy, but you have to have money. Now you can see that things are in the market, but the issue is that we can't buy them. But if you have some, that is one reason is the most agrarian areas in this country, they are secure, they are put security because they have their own production. But those people who are living in the, the urban areas, they don't have anything to eat. And simply because they are totally depending on the, the food security on the based on the market availability. Okay, and then Asia is growing with cultural ideology. It's a, sometime it is good, sometime it is bad. And the Buddhism, Hinduism, and other philosophies and religions are come up with the Asia. However, economy operates with the liberal or neoliberal marketing system. The problem is the philosophers are giving us to give up something to get more happiness. But the market is telling us, take as much as you can towards to you. And that is what liberal and neoliberal marketing system is telling. And therefore, the dilemma of Asian ideology and free market ideology on development decision making in Asia is a problematic. Now we are in a such problem. Now think that as a resource, what has happened, the direct impact of globalization in Asia, especially in Sri Lanka. In 1950s, we were agrarian society. The 40% of GDP contributed from the agriculture. Now 2000, 2015, even today, what is our contribution? to the GDP, the highest contribution in the service sector. And this is the whole explanation how market economy was giving us as a result. Okay, and this is very briefly. Now we have to see why is it? Now look at this, I'm not going to explain very much, but this is what the, the, what's the system we had in Asia. That is why I'm saying that dilemmas of economic sustainability is the big issue with the globalization because it has changed the structure in the economy. And the economy has transformed to, from agriculture to the service sector. But earlier system, we were thinking about three things. Number one is the physical development, the reservoir. The social cultural aspect is the temple. And the cosmos is spiritual dimension is a stupa or daga. That is what we are calling as a gamai pansalai bai daga bai, etc. etc. But now interdependent and mutual, mutually reinforcing pillars of sustainable development, and now it is completely different. This is the definition of United Nations after 2005. Social development, economic development, and environmental protection. That is as a result of all the process. Now we have to protect the environment as a different entity. But as I discussed earlier, it was not like that. Now let's we try to understand what the results we received thanks to globalization. Number one, the economy has its structural change. And the sustainability as a conceptually completely change. And the next one in agriculture, transformation of Sri Lankan agriculture with the Green Revolution. You know that the Green Revolution, Blue Revolution, White Revolution, and it is all about the technological transformation of agriculture. We are calling as the Green Revolution technological transformation of fisheries, we are calling them as a blue revolution, and technological transformation in the livestock, we are calling as a white revolution, it has happened, not, it does not happen to our country. So basically they're looking at hybrid seeds, irrigation, fertilizer, pesticide mechanization. These are the elements of green revolution. Now we have a big, the large debt of the bank because we want to get the fertilizer and pesticide and the technology, then it is very expensive. An attempt by agriculture science to, to eliminate hunger by improving crop performance, they use green revolution. 
but it also generates a lot of impact. One, poor countries cannot always afford the machinery, seeds, and fertilizer. You know that we know the story of the fertilizer in this country. It was a very sad story. And also using fertilizer as another way, we are thinking that the chronic kidney disease is increasing in this country because of the use of heavy fertilizer, even though it is not scientifically proved. And also it is a market the issue. We don't worry to find out what exact reasons for this causes, the reasons why it can be a big problem to the market. And the use of fertilizer leads into the inequalities between rich and poor. Those who have money, they can use fertilizer, but some others can't. And the social sustainability is violating through this modernization. And also fertilizer leads to groundwater pollution. And also irrigation has led to serious groundwater depletion, negative impact water supplies for urban population. And there are plenty of negative impact generate to the Green Revolution. Even though we started in 1960s, it's aggravated in 19, after 1977, but it's still we could not produce what we want in this country. And that's the part of the issue of the market actually. And there are some good points are also there, but the total balance is very much giving us a negative results for us and has decreased the need for human labor, resulting in unemployment in some places. You know that technology is always leaving the people from the ground. It's generate unemployment. And the third point, impact of green revolution of food system and health. Now, heavy usage of pests and pesticides is recorded in Sri Lanka and irrigated water consumption. You know that what has happened in Udavalava and the Samanalava area last couple of months. And air pollution, pesticides, you can't see the butterfly in the, the environment right now. Impact on soil and crop production. Ex extinction in indigenous varieties of crops. Now you can't see our indigenous sort of varieties in Sri Lanka. No panidodang at all. And no watak at, at all. You know, there are no kind of vegetables what we had in our childhood in this country. We always have some hybrid varieties. And it has a lot of impact. And also, it's the funny thing is the food consumption pattern is drastically changed. The people might say, no meals without GD or EGB or Coca-Cola, and the world match. Did you see that the team is enjoying the Coca-Cola? Hmm? And there are sort of such plenty of disadvantage generated through the globalization and the modernization to the Asia. It is very common for other countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and many, many Asian countries. And the number five, is encourage competition while disappearing social relations and the corporations in this country. You know that the earlier, pre-independence, our labor was very cooperative. People share the labor using various concepts. But later on, post-independence, 1948 to 1997, and after introducing this commercial labor to estates, the cooperation labor movements or labor sharing among the people were converted into depend on state. We thought that the government should do everything. A good example is, have a look at the small canals or the whatever the, the water waste in front of your houses. You are not cleaning it and waiting until the Padesi Sabha is coming for. They are heavy breeding places for the mosquitoes, but it's still you are thinking that we are paying tax, therefore they should clean it. But this is kind of ideological cultural changes, what you can observe in the society thanks to the pre-market model. 
And the post independence after 1977 to, to date, now the, there is no cooperation, labor, there is no very much state dependent. It's a huge competition. Therefore, the overall socioeconomic transition of the, the labor contribution to the country is more individualism, individualistic through the competition. Now people are using labor very much individualistic manner to produce the thing under the market economy. Okay. And let's move into the next one. What are the impact of? Then the labor substitution. You know that the family structure, the family is the main root of developing a culture. And the role of family members before 1977 and the role of family members after 1977 is a completely different. What has happened? This change in family structure and disappearing responsibility of individual members of the family change the social cultural values. And this is the biggest irreversible challenge in Asia. Still it is there unless we are thinking of it again. You know that before 1977, like in the free market economy, the, the mother was a manager. And that time father was a decision maker, the elder son or daughter supported to mother and father, and the younger and also the few members were schooling. I, I'm not saying it's a good or bad, but it makes some system. We can find out some mechanism throughout it to go for a sustainability. But the point is that we collapse, we leave it all these things out, and we got all the new transformation of the Westernized marketing model. And after 1977, many mothers were becoming a decision maker because they were went to garment factories, then some of them went to the Middle East, and they were decision maker. Then the father became a manager at the house. And the, 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 the model was running without a manager. The, any company cannot be run very well without a manager. So that the role of the family was moved to here and there. And the elder son or a daughter, either he is working in the government forces or either sometime many of them may be expatriate or garment workers. Now the country, even today, the government is promoting to people to go outside as uh, laborers. And you know that the, then the size of the family also changed. Now we have only two or three members in the family. Earlier we had many, okay? Right, now the next one. And you know that this size is giving something to think. I'm not explaining everything in it because there is no time to that much. But the teaching or studying is a part of the development of your thinking pattern, not the read, it, read out everything. You have to think. You know what happened in the, this, uh, the, the marketing model? The society is changing a, a lot. Development of decision-making process in the country is completely disappointing sometimes and disappointment in decision making process of the development. Now we are saying we developed, uh, we are trying to develop, but these are the major two areas of taking decision making in the development. And the democracy is a parliament and the market is where it is implementing. This is where we are civil society. Okay. And the civil society, the responsibility to selecting people and also they are working in the market to buy the things. And the democracy or parliament take a decision, but it is very expensive democracy and interdependency policies. Because we are saying that if there is no IMF, we will die. Okay, I'm not going to explain a little bit more, but we are expecting democracy should maximize welfare of the society. But it is very much inefficient. It seems that nothing is happening. But you know that the marketing system and the democracy both generate the competition, okay? 
In democracy after 1977, it was uh, executive presidency, and it also has a huge competition for the votes. And the market itself, it has a competition too. And how we are becoming a development process with the failure main entities of the society. And the civil society is fail because we cannot select the proper people to make policy in the parliament. And now we are utterly failed because there is no election at all. Anyway, there is no democratic pattern is working. And the market itself is inefficient because this is not the Sri Lankan market is not the market which is efficiently operating. Once again, I apologize because there is no more, we need more time to say that. I'll, I'll give you a very example, very, very simple example very quickly. Now, you know that we have three fuel stations in this country, Sipetco, China, China, Spec, and IOC. If there is a competition, what have we are expecting? The price should be more favorable for the consumers. But bad thing is that the price is equal all the entities, all the all the stations which is providing fuel in this country. Is this the market competition? No, it is not. And therefore, we are not expecting it might be maximizing welfare. And because the law enforcement is very weak in this country, the whole system is does not work properly. And the next one is resource in authoritative, resource imperative, to globalize global transition from periphery to core. You know that this developed the market model in the capitalist market model. We are wish to go to another country, not to stay in Sri Lanka. We are sending our all the raw materials to the industrial countries. We are getting their all the goods and services, even the internet and digital technology, education, electricity, the credits, loans, and everything we are asking from the industrialized or developed countries. We are providing raw materials to labor and the, all the other things, okay? So developing countries need natural and human resources of less developed countries, and less developed countries need capital and technology and brain power from DCs. Because we are the people who are downloading, we are not uploading. How many people download the things every day? So everything, everything. So we are getting their knowledge. They are trying to behave like them. Can we protect our culture? No, it is not possible because it is a huge influence. And the, all the media people, they will train in European countries to work in our countries. Most of them are graduated from European countries and they are using their techniques to demonstrate the people. Okay. And developed countries' economies are increasingly depend on the natural and human resource of LDCs, our countries. That is why they are going green cards. And even this time, Australia is open for the visas for anybody you can apply. And they are willing to get that. And the, the that part of the world is more comfortable than the, this part of the country in the world, countries in the world. Therefore, the growing interdependence of nations and their activities on one another fostered by, fostered by the depletion of natural resources as well as overpopulation. Okay. And that is another big issue we have. We are wishing to be in a developed country why this is the cultural ideological changes are given us after open the world for us through the globalization. Clear? And that is what has happened. And this is the final issue. I mean, there are many, but this is much enough for, for this extent. And the contemporary issues with regard to democracy, development, at the pre-market. The democracy and pre-market and development, I said that is a full component, failure system, what we are practicing because it is generating a lot of questions. Now let's say, let's let's take five minutes, like five, 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 six minutes to explain this table. And mind you that this is, I'm not copied from the books. 
I, I myself put them in order. And the democracy related issues, aging. You know that now Sri Lanka is reporting the highest age people in the in the country because very recently in the next, uh, I don't know, in this uh, census, I don't know. I don't have that information myself, but we know that the old people are more than the young people in this country because it was terrible incidents has happened in 1971, 1989, and the 30 years of war, all young generation were killed and died, and many of them left the country. Now we all people are in this country because of some democratic issues. And the youth uprising 1971 in the north and the south and 89 and even Aragale also part of it. And that is shouting for the, the democracy. And the public tension on party politics and we almost all of them are separated into different groups and generating the huge public tension in this country because of the democracy. And the large public sector with high inefficiency. Politicians are given jobs, but they have nothing to do in the office. And the freedom for information, but high transaction cost. You are saying that we have uh, freedom for information, but it's not easy to get it then. Okay? And in, in a democratic country, we can't get the information the way we, you know that there are some kind of a, constitution or act are coming soon to control the, the free freedom of information. And that is a part of the democracy. And also young blood in all bodies. And you can see that the, the parliament, there are many people are very old, but it's still they are thinking that they are young and the democracy is providing these people to stay there. And that is also the part of the tension, public tension of the young group in the country. And the leaders who are going to be behind the leaders, then the, then the people, not the then, then the people. You can see how many leaders we have in country, but those leaders are go behind the other leaders. We never know who are the leaders in the country. And the democracy is utmost priority, but no postpone, but postpone the elections. Huh? We are thinking, I mean, these all these things are directly linked with the economic model. They are trying their they are best to protect their power, the competitive power. And that can be the part of the, the cultural changes due to this marketing model. And what are the development related issues then? More foreign earnings from Middle East, less from Europe. We are getting more money from the Middle East, but they started up to a certain O level and A level. Those who are graduated from the university through the, the pre-education, they are living in Europe, we don't get more. More for education, but for more brain drain. People are living in the country, having an education in this country. And more for child, but more for drugs. Everybody says everything for child, but you can see the, how drug is impacted for our country. And some people are suggesting it still we can cultivate all this ganja and everything to earn money. And most women employed less family satisfaction. People have money, women is not house, and they are in somewhere else. Satisfaction is not targeting point. And the more technology taps less creative people. You know, everybody using computers and the mobile phone and generating very less creative people. More mobile phone, less communication. We never know that how to communicate through the mobile phone. And there are a lot of cases in the court because of Facebook and the WhatsApp and message and misusing of these things. And that is a part of, but people are saying having mobile phone and you know that the technology is a developing, developed features, but we generate, we create a lot of trouble using that. And the biggest project, but more tax from the public. You know that we have wonderful biggest projects. Port city is one of it, and the airports. But we have to pay more and more tax. And then the next one is uh, whatever the market related. We like elephants, everybody, but they eat our salt and kill us. Thanks to market mechanism, we are 
clear in forests to build up the various projects and things, and they lose in their habitats, then they are coming to us. Now, the elephant disaster is a big issue in this country. And more vehicle and late arrival at home. We have plenty of vehicle in the road, but you can't come to the home at time, on time, because there's a huge traffic. And then there is a more harvest, but less price. Agriculture is a big issue with price. It's a market-related issue. And prostitution, begging, drug selling are rather profitable in this country because there is no fixed cost. People are using their cultural practices and giving money, and the, the begging is the most lucrative jobs in this country. And the Facebook and cloth, free books and clothes, but no children in school. We can see that the advanced level classes are empty in many big schools, actually. They are go for tuition. More education facilities in the state school, and also we ourselves, we requested 6% from the free education. But where the students are, they are in the tuition class because it's a market-oriented system. Private education or education under privatization, that's the big issue. And the drugs becomes more profitable with huge social costs. And people are killing each other. And the government has to spend a lot of money for the cases and the hospitals. And also, ultimately, let's say, close or open, we are in the fuel booth. We were in the booth in the close economy, and we were in the booth in the open economy. And both systems are now realized that does not give an expected benefit for us. And before the final uh, slides, what we expect? We are expecting a society respecting each other and the community life, improve the quality of human life. Now it is very, very sad situation in the pathetic situation. And we want to conserve our environment. And also we want to protect our non revenable resources because they are not generating in our lifetime. And also, we have to change attitudes and practices. Also, should enable communities to care for their own environment. Finally, provide a national framework for integrating development and conservation is essential. Otherwise, we can't go ahead. Finally, we need to have a greater global alliance not for the depend, but for the maintaining our environment and the development. In conclusion, overall impact of globalized economic system damaged Asia, especially Sri Lanka, social, cultural, economics, and environmental system, and need to three things for new development model for Asia, particularly to Sri Lanka. And thank you very much. I stop five minutes before 4.30, and you have some time to ask your question. If anybody can stay with me for a long time, it doesn't matter. But if anybody wants to go early, then you can ask your question if you if you have. And thank you very much for listening. I'm sorry for if I speak a little bit speedily, uh, because I was planning to stop the class at lecture at 4.30. Thank you once again. You can ask any question if you have, please. Hello, can you hear me? Boys? Is it clear? Or if you don't have any question, you can comment on the way you listen or, or whatever. We are very open-minded people. We're happy to discuss with the people, unfortunately, even though we have this virtual. But anyway. Uh, excuse me. Okay, Amanda, are you there? Sir, uh, am I audible? Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, I am here. 
sorry uh, uh, i am on the if call if anybody have any question please ask me yes the students uh, don't you have any questions you can unmute your mic and ask the questions if you have a courage to ask questions otherwise you can type your question using the you know chat box yeah you know give you two three minutes i mean we are promoting you guys to ask something you know why we are assuming that you are the people in future will be in this seat and that is our expectation and you have to argue you have to criticize you have to comment it's okay it's a part of the study don't we hurry because some students want to go back to their home hmm. <clears throat> no questions uh, dr hemanta yes uh, yeah. sir uh, actually uh, i have a question <laughs> yeah come on uh, yeah so uh, uh, professor guratna uh, so people say uh, that there is uh, no brain drain in sri lanka mm. uh, because uh, there is no brain drain because the people who migrate from here uh, abroad uh, are doing lower quality jobs than work here also some people says uh, it is uh, uh, says uh, that is uh, the uh, country can get a, a foreign exchange through this flow uh, uh, what is your opinion about <laughs> yeah i heard that definition very recently you know that the now people want to, to change the way their interpretation of the brain drain now they are saying since they are not getting a good job there the similar job what they done in sri lanka that it's not supposed to be the brain drain but for us it is a brain drain for them it is not the brain drain because if the doctor is moving to america to a lower ranking job for them it is not the brain drain it's okay for them but we are losing a doctor you know that that is the kind of a political definition what people are making in this context in in current context in sri lanka saying that they are trying to justify that the brain drain is not the one once they are working is a lower grade in jobs than what they are done here but the point is in myself who has spending to his education because this is public money we are expecting to get the expert spending such amount of money for many years it is not the personal issue the person is going there it's okay we are not saying it's a bad thing because we can't say that under this globalized model but the point is it's a definitely brain drain because if you are calculating the amount we are losing from the economy because it is because of his knowledge so i am not agree with the the new definition what people are saying that getting a lower job in another country is cannot say a brain day no definitely it is brain drain because we are losing the his service to the country because we are the people who spend money for him okay because the country where they are getting the service they don't have any fixed cost for them only the variable cost but we use money to health and education and that is the fixed cost of making a human labor okay that's my idea uh, thank you professor okay you are welcome ladies and gentlemen i am delighted to extend gratitude through this word of thanks on behalf of the students participating in the start course on cultural linkages world and asian ideology for the academic year 2022 24 First and foremost, I would like to express our heartfelt appreciation to our esteemed lecturer, Professor N. Ragnar, for generously sharing his time and invaluable knowledge with us today. Sir, your contribution to the class is a true blessing, and we are profoundly grateful. I would also like to extend our thanks to Dr. Hamidullah N. Ragnar. and the team of the staff at the department of social science at adu who were together to bring these enlightening lectures together last but certainly not least i extend our appreciation to all the participants from our university who joined us 
for this event. Your active engagement has been a resounding success, but has also provided you invaluable insights into the topic of the impact of globalization on less developed countries, special reference to Asia. In conclusion, I wish to express our deep gratitude, Professor M. G. Kularatna, for his unwavering commitment. As this mark, his fourth consecutive year contributing to our cause. <laughs> Sir, it is a distinct honor to have you amongst us, and we deeply appreciate the time and effort you have invested in enriching our educational experience.